Thank you both for joining us. Mona, I know you like the cyclical value plays more, but with this drubbing in technology in recent days, are there names that are starting to get interesting to you? Yeah, you know, look, we continue to think the theme for at least the first half of 2022 will be uh, rotation back into value cyclical names, even to some extent, some of the defensive parts of, of the market. And we've seen that in staples in the past week. Keep in mind, there are many investors out there who were still coming into the year quite overweight in their growth tech portfolios. So we think there's room for that. Um, rotation and, and that leadership to continue. That being said, we are now at a point where the Nasdaq's down about 8% from its recent highs. That's in line with what we've seen in, in prior uh, rate hike induced sell offs over the last three years or so. And so the risk reward is becoming a little bit more interesting here. Uh, for those investors who are longer term who maybe don't have the growth exposure they want, we do think areas of technology, and you have to be selective. Uh, those with better valuations, those with, with stronger cash flows, not as longer duration, quote unquote, are uh, reasonable here as well. And so, you know, you can balance your portfolio this year for sure. That's another theme of ours. Uh, but just keep mm. in mind that value cyclical rotation may, may have some legs still. Is there a particular subsector within tech that, that you're talking about when you point to more reasonable valuations, chips or software? Anything yeah, in particular? You know, Generally, when we look at the, for example, FANG complex, um, that's one, you know, a lot of people know it and own it, uh, but we think some of the valuations there are starting to look interesting. Uh, we would certainly uh, favor those parts of technology like hardware, perhaps parts of, you know, when we think about Microsoft and software, well-established um, players in the space with proven cash flows. Uh, so those are some of the areas that we're looking at. Semis may become interesting, particularly as we get through these supply chain issues uh, more mid to later this year. Uh, but something if you're interested in building a portfolio or positioning now could be interesting as well. Chris, uh, I mentioned earlier small cap growth pretty much right in the crosshairs and bearing the brunt of, of a lot of this selling. Much of it, I guess, just a valuation adjustment from some extreme levels. Where do you see the chance of picking up, uh, you know, some, I guess, unduly punished uh, stocks right here? And what areas of the market or is it kind of an across the board, just kind of drop your basket in? No, so I think you duly noted earlier that small cap growth has been under pressure since really uh, end of last February. Um, we've continued to see after tax loss selling in December, uh, these being sold down here in January. Um, you know, multiple compression is going on with the Fed adjusting and pivoting, uh, which was certainly more hawkish. But where we're dusting off, you know, our, our work and doing our diligence is in areas that are, uh, you know, cash flows, good balance sheets, good management teams. So I would look at areas like semi-cap equipment, which is going to be supplying, uh, you know, the foundries that are making the semiconductors, which are in significant shortage. Um, you know, we need to get through these shortages, supply chain issues, transportation, logistics. I think all of those will begin to alleviate a lot of the pain on some of these smaller companies that, uh, you know, are having a more difficult time adjusting to those constraints.